take us through your thought process here, how you decided to pull the trigger on this deal and, and acquire Kasperi Kapanen. Well, we like Kapanen. I mean, we really didn't want to trade him in the first place, but we had a chance to get Phil Kessel, so we had to do it. But uh, we followed him. We like him. We, we've we kind of had a little bit of a revolving door in our top six where we're moving guys in and out. And now with the addition of Zucker and, and Kapanen, we feel that our top six is set. Um, I mean, you guys know how he plays. He brings speed. He's a great penalty killer. And what we like is he's he's still only 24. He's uh, team controlled for four more years, and uh, we're pretty happy to get him. How often do you do you make a? You've been around the block for a long time, Jim. How how often do you trade a player prior to him getting to the NHL, and you just continue to keep your eye on him and think, man, I'd like to get that guy back. Like it's got to be a rarity. It's it's not easy to do, but you've pulled that off this time with Kasperi Kapanen. Yeah, I mean, we keep our eye on everybody. We, we we follow everybody. But there's some guys that, that you trade and you say, geez, I really wish I didn't have to do that. And this was one of those players. So uh, we followed him. I mean, I've I've known the family for a long time, uh, drafted his father in Carolina and, and uh, known Casper, since, you know, since he was born. So um, there's, a, there's a long history with this player. Jimmy, Jimmy, how? how go sorry, ahead, Jimmy. go ahead. I was just going to ask. <laughs> sorry, we asked it at the same time, but I, I, I was going to talk about, you know, a guy like Kapanen who was playing maybe in a top nine role in Toronto. Did you, did you feel that he just needs an opportunity to get into that six role with you, where you can, you know, slide him on the right side? And and you just mentioned that your top six is set now with the addition of Zucker. Did you feel that maybe he was a little bit stunted or that spot was not available in Toronto for him? Yeah, I mean, look at the two players ahead of him in Toronto. I mean, it's it's obvious why he he was playing in that role. But but we have a different role for him here. We feel he can handle it playing uh, playing the minutes in top six, and he'll end up playing either with Crosby or Malkin. So that's going to help him. And uh, but when you're playing uh, behind Nylander and Marner, it's it's going to be pretty hard to get in the top six in Toronto. How stressful, Jimmy, do you think that is for guys going into a situation where they're going to either have Malkin or uh, or Sid? I mean, a guy that's been a, a third-line player here, he's got to kind of feel the pressure to produce. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he'll feel pressure. You know, I see it all the time when guys come into our locker room for the first time and some really good players, and, and uh, it can be difficult for them at times. Um, but uh, I also see guys that come in and, and their game goes to a whole nother level. But, you know, with Kappen and, and his speed and the way he kills penalties and some of the things he does, even if there's an adjustment period, he's still going to make our team better. With Jim Rutherford, the GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, after your season came to an end, you you, you had your, your season-ending press conference, and you're very open, very honest that, that you didn't like the way everything played out. And I, I believe you issued a statement that changes would be coming. I guess this would indicate this is the beginning of that. But when you evaluated your team and you, you came to that conclusion, how much of that was based on the five games or the four games in the bubble? Uh, and how much of it was the previous 70 games during the regular season? It's a, it's a difficult year for evaluation. Yeah, the 70 games were pretty good for the Penguins. We had a pretty good regular season. And especially when you look at the key injuries we had. But the biggest thing in my decision was the determination we that we didn't have, or the lack of determination as that series wound down with Montreal. Now, I, I said right from the start, Montreal is a better team um, than people give them credit for. And when their goalie's playing, he's the best in the game, and that's what we ran into. So we played some good games in that series first two games but when it didn't go our way we didn't stick with it and the key to my decision was what happened the year before when we played the islanders and we got beat four straight we probably deserved to win the first two games but their goalie was good and and then we fizzled out again so when you're starting to fizzle out two years in a row it's not about whether you lose it's it's about how you go about losing and uh in my opinion we didn't uh we didn't give everything we had 
um, and play desperate hockey at the end of those series. And when that happens, then something's got to change. So would that that evaluation apply to every player, uh, Crosby and Malkin included? Well, uh, yeah, evaluation is is for every player, of course. But you you have to look at what players can do for you and what what they are doing for you. And uh, you know, I mean, in in those guys' case, I mean, I thought I thought Sid was good. In Geno's case, he got a little bit frustrated, but he was good early in the series. And, and had a really had a terrific year the, his regular season. So, you know, it's I'm I'm not uh, I'm I'm not concerned about our core guys. I'm not I'm not looking to change them. With Jim Rutherford, the uh, GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, so when you consider where we're going here with the NHL, with um, the salary cap being flat for a couple of years, the schedule is going to be off a little bit. Um, how, how do you navigate through this, Jim? Do you, I mean, the, the move you made today would suggest you're just going to treat it like any other offseason. Uh, but does it feel like any other offseason, considering how unique everything is right now? Yeah, it's really unique, and it's an odd time of the year for us to be doing certain things. But nothing changes for somebody in my position. I mean, we have to get ready to play the next season, and we have to improve our team. And... Uh, so, you know, I'm going to have to make more changes to, you know, to get our, get us under the cap where obviously everybody knows we're going to trade one of our goalies. Um, and, you know, if I can make trades where we bring in younger players, that would be good for the organization because I trade most of our first round picks. But <laughs> in this case, I, in this case, I decided that the guy that we were taking at 15 was not going to help the Penguins within the window that we have to contend and, and cap it and camp. Jimmy, you just mentioned goaltending. Do you think, and you said you're looking to move one of your guys, do you think to having two quality guys is more important now than ever? We're seeing in the playoffs now uh, with so many games. I mean, this is obviously a different situation with so many games packed in, but just the, uh, the situation you have in net to have two quality guys in there? Yeah, I mean, ideally, I'd like to keep both our goalies. But yeah. in the cap world, I'm not allowed to do it. You know, it's just like when we traded Flurry. I mean, I, I would have liked to have kept him, let him retire here, but he was making six million dollars at the time, and and we didn't have the cap space. Murray Murray was going to make half as much. So, so it's just the world we live in. Um, you know, Vegas got a good goalie when they got Flurry. He was great for them the first few years, and. Of course, whoever gets one of our goalies, they're getting somebody in their mid-20s, and and uh, they're going to get a good goalie. Have you determined which one you, you want to keep, <laughs> Jim? Or, you know, is it uh, you're going to let the other teams determine that based on what they're willing to offer you? Yeah, I think it'll be dictated as to how much cap space we can get. It's harder right now fitting Matt Murray into our cap. But if a couple other things happened and – it opened up more room, then, you know, we'd we'd listen on, on both goalies. I mean, I like both goalies. I'm not sitting here saying I want to trade one of them, but but like I said, it's we're not going to be able to fit both of them. How much of it is uh, Seattle on the horizon as well, Jim, the fact that, you know, someone's yeah. someone's got to go to Seattle in a year? Uh, well, Murray will be unrestricted in a year, so that uh, – we wouldn't be able to control that. Uh, the other goal we have in the organization is Casey DeSmith, and uh, we like him a lot in that number two role, and he he will be eligible for the uh, for the expansion draft. Well, yeah, it's going to be a fascinating uh, couple of months between now and the beginning of next year, whenever that actually is. Uh, but uh, we always appreciate you finding time for us and breaking everything down from your end down in Pittsburgh, and uh, we'll do it again down the road. Thank you, Jim.